Good. Okay. Um, so we had a general introduction from myself about OGC programs and uh, the MOU between OGC and um, OSGO. Stefan was just talking about OGC's innovation program and how this helped, you know, how this works uh, with the open source uh, com community. And now we have uh, Angelus and Tom um, to look from the standard side um, on OGC standards, the open standards, and uh, what is in for the OSGEO community and, and how they collaborated. Do you want the microphone or? Yeah, okay. we can. All right. Good. Floor is yours. Thanks. All right. So, hello, everyone. I'm Angelos, and Tom is with me. We are both representing OSGO as board members, and at the same time, we are both OGC members, and we are participating in, in, in several OSGO projects. So, we are going to talk today about how we collaborate uh, uh, as OSGO projects, how we do collaboration with, uh, with OGC, but we are also going to talk about how the foundation is collaborating with, with OGC in, in general. So we are, this is our, uh, this is a, a short overview of our uh, presentation. We are going to talk about how the OGC uh, evolved in terms of APIs. And we are going to describe how, how, how is the current activity on the OGC API front. Then we are going to talk about the collaboration between OGC and OSGEO. And if we have time at the end, we will give you a short, short, demo, a short demo of what, uh, of what our projects can do. So please, Tom, uh, take over. Thank you, Angelos. So if anybody needs to recover from last night and uh, wake up again, just come here and have this light shining on you, and uh, you'll wake up. At any rate, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to walk through uh, a little bit of the OGC API uh, evolution, um, which is showing my age. But basically, uh, looking back, looking back at the at, at the OG, at the history of OGC APIs, for better or for worse. Um, we saw that, uh, uh, so I'm going to walk through the 90s and the 2000s and, and sort of current state. So in the 90s, uh, there, were, there was a lot of focus around building these APIs around the sort of CORBA or XML RPC uh, design pattern. Um, SOAP and web services description language was, uh, was, was, was prominent at that point. And the whole concept of service-oriented architecture was, uh, was huge. We wanted to have uh, services and, and APIs for, for absolutely, uh, absolutely everything. There was a strong concept of having a database uh, in the back. And um, uh, of course, you all, most of you shouldn't all know that uh, the web map service standard was version one from 1999 was the uh, at the forefront of the uh, of the initial efforts in OGC, along with geography markup language. Then, in the in the two in the 2000s, uh, the concept of, of of Web two sort of proliferated, where we started to see uh, uh, you know a lot a lot of JavaScript, AJAX, Google Maps came came out, and that sort of changed the whole game, um, where we had slippy maps and tiles, and you know th th this conference has seen its share of uh, 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 the presentations and work and projects ar uh, around these concepts. At the same time, in OGC, we kept pushing along with, with uh, uh, evolving with web feature service, web coverage service, uh, processing, and, uh, and catalog. So um, there was, uh, I, th I think, uh, it, those, those specifications have served us very well over the last uh, 10 or 20 years. At the same time, um, it's important to sort of look where, where, where things are at and, and, and have an honest, honest conversation. And I think a lot of that has happened in the recent, in the, in the recent uh, activity. So some technical considerations around the way OGC APIs were, uh, were developed is uh, XML was, uh, was very, is very prominent. Um, key value pairs when doing requests. Um, uh, uh, GML, so geography markup language, which is this huge spe specification, um, very difficult to implement uh, in full. 
um, various things around overloading the actual HTTP specification with very specific things, uh, exhaustive specifications and requirements. So it was a lot. It was a lot of you either implement this entire standard or you don't. Um, and I've I've wasted many a Friday night implementing a standard to to, to the end. So the other the other challenges were search engines. How many times have we had discussions around how do we find data? Um, on go via Google or via uh, some other or Yahoo or some other search engine, and making it easy to to for web developers. So I'll give you an example. Um, as part of the weather service, we developed a mobile app. Uh, well, I didn't, but the web developers did, and and my group runs the uh, the WMS that does all the real time radar data. So one of the developers came up to me and asked for for the WMS spec and how do they interact with this web map service. So. They're still scratching their heads, but uh, it was released, but it was very difficult to implement and, and comprehend that specification for a web developer. So fast forward, um, help is on the way. Uh, so these days, uh, we have a concept of, of REST, a representational state transfer, um, more, more sort of focus on HTTP verbs, uh, really using the status codes as opposed to um, sending error messages with everything as HTTP 200. Um, using URIs, the concept of identifiers is, is, is getting stronger and stronger. Obviously, JSON um, is, is uh, the lingua franca of sort of exchange, especially for web, for web applications, much more compact and, uh, uh, and performant. Open API and Swagger is, is, uh, is all the rage these days. So Open, Eyes, Open API is basically a YAML or JSON representation of how you define uh, a, a web service endpoint and its operations and so on, its parameters. And Swagger is really neat tooling that implements Open API so web developers can quickly open an API, figure out what are the, all the operations that the, uh, what are all the uh, request that the API supports, what parameters can I give, and so on, right in a web application without reading the spec. So a little bit, I know Athena mentioned a little bit about uh, activities in OGC with regards to recent events around open API and collaboration with W3C, but I'm also um, going to walk through a little bit of it here. So. If you haven't read the W3C spatial data on the web best practices, it's probably a good idea on your flight or train home to, uh, to, to, to take a look at it. It's a, a recommendation and it has a lot of information on um, recommendations on describing uh, you know, geospatial data formats, concept of identifiers, accessing geospatial data, licensing and proven proven provenance. Um, I'm from Canada, so I'm prone to saying provenance, but provenance. And the idea of being webby. So a spec is, is, is really valuable if it's of the web. So it's web friendly and it's web developer friendly. So some of, the, some of the things that we're seeing coming out of OGC with regards to standards development is again, things being webby, developer friendly, lightweight specifications. And uh, uh, this one right here, removing, HTTP, removing the use of HTTP as a tunnel. Um, this one took me a while to figure out, but I'm here now. And, uh, and, and I'm telling you that this is a, 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 an easier way to go, especially when you're sending it to, showing it to a web developer who may not have um, you know, geospatial knowledge per se. So really getting closer to the HTTP specification and that we're not inventing a, a, a layer on top of it. And the specifications are also different, uh, uh, evolving, where now we have the concept of a core specification uh, with a bunch of extensions. So um, the really easy use cases of, you know, lat long points and getting it in GeoJSON, uh, that is essentially a, a core specification of, for example, the, the new WFS uh, spec, as opposed to, you know, anything more elaborate. A little bit of a timeline, so again, the W3C recommendation. There was an OGC API white paper, um, in, uh, and then in 2018 and 2019, the rubber started to hit the road. Uh, there was a WFS3 hackathon. Um, there was also a Weather on the Web API hackathon, and there was the OGC API ha hackathon in London. So we're starting to see uh, a little bit more hands-on 
uh, in, in an open fashion from, from OGC, which has resulted in uh, a lot of good work with regards to uh, supporting the new wave of implementations. Here's a sneak peek at uh, what, I guess, the initial new profile of the standards are going to be called. So the standards are actually, uh, the, the names of the standards are actually on the left-hand side, and everything in brackets is what it used to be called, or what some of us have always been used to. So uh, um, again, so o, uh, OGC API common, so all the specs will implement a common layer. Whoops. <laughs> then um, we have OGC API features, coverages, maps and tiles, as well as uh, uh, processing. And then we have a catalog service, a new catalog service, which is records. Uh, that's still up for debate as to what we're going to call it. It might be called catalog, as you've seen in previous slides, or it might be called records. We'll see. Or cast your vote and let us know what you think. A little bit about GitHub activity. So OGC, as Athena mentioned, is uh, starting to use GitHub more and more, especially in an open fashion. So. The standards are actually written in ASCII doc now, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're exported and released as HTML. So in addition to the PDFs or other versions of the documents, now you can get them on the web. You can actually hyperlink to them, uh, different parts, and send them to all your friends. Um, there's also a Gitter chat, so there's a lot of collaboration around the spec. So this is really positive to see, especially from, uh, uh, from open, an open source implementation perspective. And I'm, I'll pass it over to Angelos to talk a little bit about uh, the OSGO collaboration. Thank you, Tom. So, as Tom described, uh, things are changing in OGC, but also in OSGO. And uh, uh, we are trying to figure out how to work together more and more every day. So, Athena also talked about uh, the MOU that we have, and that is also going to go through some revision at some point from the board and OGC. So, I'm going to talk a bit more technical and what happened to some uh, use cases, some, some of our projects that are actually heavily involved in, in the, in the, also in OSU and, and in OGC specification uh, standards uh, implementation. So, uh, Tom, in 2011, started the PyCSW pro project, which uh, uh, one, uh, the project was, uh, was all about being uh, able to, to make a catalog with uh, very few requirements and very few resources. So uh, the, the need was to have a very lightweight catalog. And PyCSW from day one uh, wanted to be uh, passing the site tests. So uh, the effort was to, to be able to provide a, a, compli a compliance server from day one. And so this, this happened very fast, and I joined Tom in the, in the process. And uh, while we, we, we managed to reach uh, compliance in 2013, so uh, the, if you know the CSW spec is, uh, is, a bit, uh, is, a, is a huge document and it has many, many uh, aspects. So then uh, around uh, 2014, we managed to not only pass all the tests, but we managed to also become a reference implementation because at, at that point, uh, OGC started requesting reference implementations. And as you know, open source software is the best way to do this because you have the source code. People can learn how to, how to implement uh, a standard if they can get the source code. And that led to 2016 where OGC actually was developing the CSW3 um, standard. And while being in a, in a draft stage, we also started implementing CSW3 in parallel. And by the time that the, 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 the standard uh, reached to the voting st uh, stage, we had already implemented it completely. So we were the first reference, implementations for, for, uh, reference implementation for CSW3 and at the same time, OGC wanted to have reference implementations in order to finalize the standard. So it's a win-win situation in this case, and a very good use for open source software. Uh, and this now evolved even, even more because uh, today we have a new project which also follows the, the, same, the same pattern that OGC now uh, uses to develop the, the, the new standards. So 
Today, we have already uh, been working on the PyGeo API pro project, which is now a Knowledge Geo community project. It's in the early days. And uh, it is following the implementation of OGC API, and specifically the features and the processing. So as the, the standard gets finalized, we are also implementing at the same time and we are also at the stage that we pass the side tests. So when it is finalized, it, the, the reference implementation will be there. And we are developing alongside, with, alongside OGC, we are going to hackathons, and we are hoping that uh, also we can do this on the, on the cold sprints, in, in the OGO cold sprints. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very, very, very nice uh, time for uh, OSGEO and OGC that we can collaborate closer uh, on the development of, of, of standards. We will have a short demo of PyGeo API in, in a while. And also, we have another aspect. We have Team Engine, which is a software for testing the standards. So this is developed by OGC, and uh, two years ago, uh, as part of the MOU between OSGO and OGC, uh, team, team Engine applied to our incubation pro program. So uh, Team Engine is, is, is going through the incubation procedure, which means that it's been uh, tested for you know, being open source, having, uh, 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 living up to the standards of a high, high quality open source project. And uh, that, that, that is still in the process. Uh, Team Engine hasn't graduated yet, but it's, it's in the process. Uh, and also, by uh, including Team Engine in our, in our uh, family of projects, we are also helping our other projects to implement compliance so software, because working along with Team Engine was a very successful story for PyCSW. We were able to provide feedback on the site test, test uh, on the team uh, engine team uh, while uh, implementing a reference implementation. Uh, so we help validate site, and, uh, and when the standard is, uh, is finalized, site is uh, validating every, every, every other project. So a little, a little bit more about the OSGO and OGC col uh, collaboration. We, have the, we had the, the Memorandum of Understanding signed in 2008. Uh, we are coordinated, uh, uh, and we do that on the board level. We have, we have uh, Bruce, who is, uh, who is the, the, the point of contact on, on the OSGO part uh, for, for OGC. And we have uh, meetings with OGC members. And uh, uh, in, the, in the board meeting this, the, 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 the previous weekend, we had a long session with, uh, with, with Scott. So we are uh, now trying to, uh, to, to work closer together. And uh, part of the, of, of the MOU was to have reference implementations from OSGO. And I think we are, we are doing a very good, very good job in this, in this aspect. Also, OGC provided uh, six um, member slots, individual member slots for our OSGO uh, developers. And that means that if, if a member of OSGO uh, or a project wants to join OGC, uh, can, can actually take one of these slots and participate and have access to the documentation well. Today, the, 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 the standards move to GitHub, so they're easier to, to get. In the, in the previous uh, times, it was somebody had to be an OGC member to see a draft standard because before it was, it was finalized. So that helped also a lot to have this kind of access to documentation. So I'm now going to talk about uh, OGC compliance and how this relates to the OSGO project. So as Athena explained earlier, a project can implement an OGC standard, and that means it can pass the, 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 the standard tests uh, even without paying for being certified. So currently, uh, what we did last night, we went to the OSGO site and we took all the projects and we looked if they are implementing uh, an OGC standard. And actually, we found that 21 out of our graduated OSGO projects implement at least one OGC standard. And that includes servers, clients, 
format parsers, uh, anything. All right, so we have 21 projects implementing. Out of these projects, five voice geo projects are certified, so they are OGC compliant, and one OS geo community project. So we have degree, which is compliant with 16 standards, all of them reference implementations. We have QGIS, which is compliant with one standard, and this one standard uh, is a reference implementation. We have uh, GDAL, which is compliant with three standards. Then we have Map Server, which is compliant with one, and PyCSW compliant with four, and also a reference implementation. And we have the community project, which, which is ISTSOS, which is compliant with one standard. Now, in this list, we did not add PyJO API, and the, and the reason is that the standard is not final yet, all right? So it's not there. And, and yeah, and GeoServer, which is, uh, it, it is uh, implementing, but I think it, 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 didn't, it doesn't pass the side tests currently. So, hmm, we need to get them to work. All right, so that is about it, about uh, the presentation, and now we would like to run a short demonstration of PyGeo API so that you get a feeling on, of how this all works and how we are moving along the, the OGC API features. Maybe you want to ask a question before that or we, you want to, to run the demo right away? I don't know. Any questions? Immediate ones? Okay, so, Tom, you want to join? Thank you, Angelos. So I'm just gonna switch over to the browser. Whoops. Which has been closed. Um, oh. Let's try this. So I'm just going to do a demo of uh, the PyGeo API project, which, would, which will demonstrate the uh, evolving OGC API features um, specification from, from OGC. And I know you're all excited, so yeah. So this is, this is, a, new, this is a WFS, believe it or not. And the idea is, um, in, in, in line with the W3C recommendation and the, the evolving, evolving OGC API standards, uh, things like JSON and HTML are now first class to make them, again, more webby. So you remember the concept that we talked about, more webby and lower barrier and all of that. Um, this is sort of, here we are. I think this term actually means that both humans and machines can read the same thing, and it's okay for both of them. <laughs> so here we have the landing page of our, of our OGC API features instance, and you can see various metadata that you would get from a present-day get capabilities response. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you some examples here. So we're gonna drill down and see all the different uh, feature collections that are available in this uh, OGC API features instance. So we can see here are all the feature collections that are available, plus some uh, you, you know, title and abstract kind of metadata. And let's click on uh, one, at any point in time, let me just back up, at any point in time, obviously Angelos mentioned being able to be read by uh, machine readable or humans. This is, uh, here's the machine representation of what we see on the web page, so this is JSON, as you all are probably aware. Now let's list out all the collections, and we can see a, a number of collections, and let's look at uh, large lakes. So here's some sort of high-level information about that specific feature collection, and now we can start to browse the feature collection. So again, this is a, this is a, a new WFS, or OGC API feature. So here we can see an HTML representation, with a, with a table, with all the attributes, and we can see the geometry all mapped out. And hey, we can even interact with the map 
at the same time. So I'll zoom into uh, Lake Ontario because I'm from close to there and I'm going home soon. So here we are. So here we can see if we wanted to click and open that feature, there's the actual feature. And as you can see here, this is all, uh, this is all linked uh, or this provides the sort of identifier or the URI. So the other thing around the, the, the specs is that they're designed to be um, search engine friendly. So you can do a Google dataset search with an OGC API instance now because of the way they're designed and using things like schema.org and so on. So there's an example of, uh, of, of what a specific feature looks like. And again, you can get that back in JSON. So really low barrier, really easy to uh, uh, you know, implement either clients or, or servers. I'll give you some examples. At the initial WFS3 hackathon, we put PyGeo API together in, uh, I think, three days. And I'll give you another example. Uh, in one of our, in OWS Lib, which is a Python OGC client, implementing WFS3 took 60% less code than uh, implementing WFS1 or 2. So uh, uh, take heart. This is really low barrier and really easy to implement for web developers, for GIS people. And we're really extending the reach here, as you can see. So um, I guess to close that off, I, I think I would say, um, as Cliff Cotman of OGC once said, interoperability doesn't happen by accident. Um, so there's a lot of good work being done at OGC, and the, the, the relationship between OGC and OSGO is natural, healthy, and evolving, and I think this is an exciting time to be involved. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Tom. Uh, Angelus. Angel Are there any questions? Yeah, and uh, just to remind you, if you go down now, you have to queue up a very long time, so b better stay here and have some good discussions. Thank you. It, it, I have a comment and a question again. Uh, first of all, the comment, congratulations for all the work uh, being done both at OGC and uh, um, with the community. PyGeo API I can share a personal experience here. I deployed it, uh, I'm following it on GitHub, and it took me roughly 10 minutes to deploy and to connect to my data structure and to have uh, uh, all, all my, my data uh, available in this easy to use manner. So well done, guys, uh, keep on doing that. Uh, and then the question relates a little bit to the slide that you, Tom, showed where we had the new way, the new naming convention of the, uh, of the uh, different standards and the old one. I didn't see there the sensor things API. And I was just wondering because I think we have been using it at JRC a lot and we're really happy with it. Uh, uh, it was, I think, the first uh, uh, one that is following closer the uh, W3C way of doing things. I was wondering, is there a need to rework somehow the OGC uh, um, um, uh, sensor things API? Uh, or, and is it going to share this uh, common way of handling yeah. things with the rest? So exactly, this is, this is how it will work. Uh, initially, WFS3 started as a, uh, as a, as a draft by the community. Uh, and then we realized that we need to have a commons uh, a specification for common things. So actually the first WFS uh, um, hackathon uh, worked on, on WFS and the second one worked mainly on defining what are the common, the common things that need to be in, in the standards. So right now the common specification is also being, uh, it, it is no, now being drafted and we already know that all there, there, there have been um, working groups that are being formed. For example, me and Tom are, 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 uh, are in the catalog uh, group. And catalog is not a thing right now because it's, it hasn't been officially started, but we have been working on that. So I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm sure that the SOS uh, people are already thinking how to uh, get the common specification and add their stuff on top of the common specification. Uh, the same way we are now going to go work on PyCSW4, which is going to be the next version, which is going to be based on the commons and WFS work. So we are at the state where everything can change. Uh, we, we don't have final standards yet. 
And we do have stable software to show even at this stage, but of course it will get better. And one, one more thing, um, it is easier now for the developers, but may, somebody can say it's not yet complete because, for example, we don't have transactions yet in WFS. And that will be an extension of the standard. So typically in the past, OGC standards had the whole package in, in, in the core. Today, the, the, the core is going to be lightweight. So, for example, only HTML and JSON for WFS3. But then, if you want GML, you can implement it. Nobody will stop you from doing that. And for transactions, you will be able to do a, an extension. So all the little nice things and features will come as extensions, and they will be handled also as a, a part of the standard. So we are trying to get more, uh, to get things in smaller pieces, and it's a better way to organize in order or also to help developers. You know, it's difficult to implement a 300 page specification at once. At least our experience showed that. <laughs> Good. Other questions? Yeah. Do we really think that having a simple core spec and then lots and lots of extensions that may or may not get implemented by anybody is the way to improve interoperability? I can just see a lot of people coming up and saying, why don't you support this? Why didn't you support that extension? What about the version two of that extension? Yeah, I don't know. I guess there's a balance somewhere between core and extensions. Um, and implementing a spec, you know, 100 percent, the, the way the way it is now, I guess that part of that remains to, to remains to be seen. And this is where the idea of uh, information communities start to start to evolve. So, for example, where I come from, the Mech, from the Mech community, we will rally and build uh, and and sort of adhere to a specific set of extensions atop WFS3 or sorry, OGC API features, or, or, or processes, or coverages, or whatever. So that's one approach. Apologies if it was already said, but uh, uh, based on your uh, experience from current process, and let's say from the movement, because I'm just feeling something big is coming, uh, could you guess uh, when this core uh, of the core part of this uh, OGC API will be s somehow formalized and stable? Just also asking from the perspective of a data provider who is at this moment about to initiate a big project to support uh, Inspire legal requirements, whilst hearing that there is coming a new strong uh, standard which may significantly impact the way how the data will be made available for the mainstream developer community, which from which we are hearing the request guys make this SDI stuff easier and more usable. So just I'm asking, when do you think this OGC core will be stable? Then uh, to be able to uh, better communicate with, let's say, Inspire Legal um, people and to see uh, what this, how we will have to communicate to the stakeholders. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That, that, that's a good question. Um, I guess uh, I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that question fully. I'm certainly not going to say anything here. But uh, th there is some coordination that is to be done, as I understand it, between OGC and ISO with regards to making things an associated ISO standard. So that ISO has, as I understand it, its own processes and, 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 it, and its own timelines. So um, I, I, I'm not really aware of any formal dates. I've heard of WFS uh, coming out very soon in terms of the, uh, the, initial, the initial cut of the, of the specification. The other ones are being rapidly evolved and developed, and you can see them all on GitHub out in the open um, as well. So. Yes, but it, it is coming. I mean, one day you will open QGIS and you will be able to 
connect to a, a feature server or a covered server. So this is um, this is the this is the trajectory that we're going on in terms of when. Obviously, WFS3 is the first out of the gate. Um, the other ones are being worked on. I, I don't know if anybody else from the uh, team here has any further comments on timing. Uh, no, oops, no, I, I don't know about the timeline, um, but that is a good point. So we are, you know, because that's all you and the community is looking into that, I, I took a note and that, that is probably a good topic also for a blog for Scott Simmons. Um, but as Tom already mentioned, so we have also very close coordination uh, with ISO TC211. And uh, so, you know, we are coordinating that with them, but I cannot... I do not know the, uh, the timelines. Good. So, last chance for the last question of the session. One, two, three, nuns. I will thank, uh, I want to thank the, my, my co-presenters, the, the audience.